If you could put yourself back now, you were talking about investing and how it's shifted over time. But if you were, and you were also talking about the private markets, how there's a lot more opportunity there. But if you were a kid coming out of college, and we're both uh, alma mater, uh, Cornell, but you graduated in 1979. But if you were graduating today and you had to actually play, if you will, the public markets, do you think that opportunity that you had in 1979 still exists in 2023? You know, Andrew, it's, it's such a great question. I think that markets can become more efficient. And there's a question in my mind about once the market becomes more efficient, whether it actually does um, have the likelihood of becoming less efficient afterwards. So for sure, there's more money in public markets. Things have become somewhat more efficient. But I also see a short-term orientation that tells me that it's possible some pricing has actually become less efficient. I think when you look at Meta, uh, the stock's been all over the place in, in a reasonably short period of time, um, tra falling to under 100, then rising back up to almost 300, li literally months apart. Um, for a large, well-established company that I think everybody can analyze. So I think that there are opportunities. Now, if, if a kid came to me and said, where do you think I should potentially make my career, I would encourage them to look for the most inefficient pockets in the world. Um, I also think it's important that they get mentored, that most people aren't ready to, to just jump right into this business right out of school. So I do think there are opportunities, but people should ask themselves, Right. What, what are my interests? What kind of edge might I have? If, if you're from a different country, maybe you have great contacts in that country. Maybe you know a lot about the business culture in that country. And so my advice would be to go where you're naturally inclined and go where you think there may interest, be interesting opportunities. Obviously, a market that's setting all-time highs may not be the best place to, uh, right. to, to focus a career. Uh, this may not be about edge, but, you know, Warren Buffett's often talked about index funds. Becky was mentioning index funds to you before, which have changed the business. I think that's actually what's made them so much more efficient to a large degree. But do you also subscribe to the philosophy that if you can invest with Seth Klarman, that you should actually be investing in index funds? And that's that's the safer uh, and best path. You know, I, 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 the argument for index funds is that you're going to have low transaction costs near zero and you're going to have um, exposure to the market. You're not going to underperform the market, but neither will you outperform the market. I think for um, the average person out there who isn't um, terribly sophisticated um, and is able to take a long-term view, I don't see anything wrong with index funds. But I think the, one of the critical things about the long-term return from investing is that it depends on the entry price. So if you enter when the market's very expensive at a high valuation, you may be disappointed because you might match the index, but the index may not do very well from there. So uh, the other thing is you don't want to go into index funds, experience a bad market, and then bail out. That's what investors tend to do. Right. Um, they get in at the wrong time and they get out at the wrong time. And so it, investors who go into index funds should go in with the idea that they're going to stay through thick and thin. And you were talking also with Becky about technology. I wanted to understand how you think about the inflection point with a technology company. There, of course, was a point where Amazon might have seemed like a speculation. Today, in retrospect, you wouldn't think that. You might even look at Tesla that way. There are some people in the public market, in the, in the public right now, who think that Bitcoin and, and various cryptocurrencies are complete and utter speculation. There are others who say 10 years from now, we're going to look back and say that wasn't, that wasn't one. How do you think about that distinction? You know, Andrew, one of the things that's really important, there's a, a, an enormous amount of fire hose of information coming at all of us all the time. And as an investor, I've learned to try to be focused on things that actually are going to move the needle for me and my portfolio. So I try to focus on bottom-up individual situations, stocks, bonds, um, real estate um, transactions, and I don't spend a lot of time thinking about things where I think the answer is pretty imponderable. So I do spend time thinking about technology, and part of that, at least, is to avoid being on the wrong side, to avoid being in a company that gets disrupted. I think something like crypto, which I've tried hard to understand the arguments and figure out why people are so excited about it, and I can't find value there. So I'm not making a judgment that it might not go up. I have no idea. 
but we focus our time where we think we might spend it productively.